All right, welcome to another Reggae University session, which surely is a special occasion since we have Elaine Lawton, Taurus Riley, Dean Fraser, as well as Dennis Howard on the panel with us. Please wow. give them a big round of applause. Wow. Taurus Singy Singy Riley doesn't need an introduction really. He is one of the best contemporary <laughs> Jamaican singers hey, whose versatility oh. ranges from roots reggae to rock steady to dancehall and everything in between. From gimme little one drop to she's royal to burning desire wow. to good girl gun bad. He wow. just runs it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Wow. Well. Elaine Lawton not only has a captivating voice, but is also a songwriter for various artists. When she was living in the States, for example, she pinned lyrics for Rockefeller artists like Cameron and Freeway. Before she decided to focus on her own music, she was actually an investment banker. In 2005, she released her breakthrough single, No Ordinary Love, on Don Corleone's Seasons Rhythm. Last year, she released her album, Ten of Hearts, via Jukebox Productions. Applause, please. And next to me, we have the saxophone player, Dean Cannonball Fraser, who is one of the most in-demand musicians in Jamaica, whose recorded history goes back to the 1970s, and whose name can be found on numerous Jamaican recordings, ranging from Bob Marley, Dennis Brown, Peter Tosh, Lauren Hill, Culture, Black Yuhuru, to just name a few. When wow. Dean arranged a song, it is bound to be a hit. Yes. yes. And we also have Dennis Howard on the panel, who is not only at home at the university as a music, uh, as an ethnomusic ecologist, but also in nearly every field of the music industry. He was a journalist, artist, manager, producer, as well as sound system DJ. He recently released his second book, The Creative Echo Chamber, music production in Kingston, Jamaica, which is available at our nation store right beside the Reggae University. I want to put the first question to Taurus, Dean, as well as Elaine, because you are all part of the same camp, and that includes the producer. I'm not, uh, is Shane here right now? Yeah, but he's back. Okay, unfortunately Shane Brown is not here, but they all belong to the same camp of Jukebox Productions. So what makes teamwork become a dream work? No, what makes dream work become a teamwork? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, it's all work, you know. Whether it's dream work or teamwork, it's work, you know. We put in work. Um, Canon Fraser, Mr. Fraser, right here. The man that changed my life as far as music is concerned. Because I was stepping into the music scene, you know, because of my father, Mr. Jimmy Riley. And him did have a record. You can't clap my father. Yeah, man, clap him, please. Yes. So, you know, my birth father, Mr. Riley, you know, and then you have your forefathers. So, the man is like my forefathers. I really have more fathers, you know what I mean? But, him did have a label named Love and Promotion. And that's where I started doing the recording. You know, getting some practice on his label and some DJ kind of thing. And little singing and ray, ray, ray. Take a break, start learning about music more serious and saying, all right, me get serious. Here comes... I'm bridging them from Yaman Production and I'm linked up with Canon. Now, Canon now is the Canon, you understand me? And he's the Dean, so definitely it's like a musical school. And him teach me so much every day, just going to the studio long before me even start recording my stuff. So I used to see Dean do harmony upon people, projects, and you know, play saxophone parts on other people's projects, and just hang out at the studio and pick up a few things. And you know, so definitely, we some canon youth and then canon step it up now i say all right jukebox so it's just strength to strength to strength 
everyone coming forward, putting their best work and putting their best ideas together and just trying to make one big positive movement. So I circle. Yeah, following what Tara said, um, it's definitely strength to strength. You know, each member of the team has their respective strengths and we lean on each other, we feed off of each other's energy and it's so important to have different input so that you don't have one type of sound. You know, there's, there's variety in the sound and there is, there, is, there is love in the mix, you know, so there is positivity. And I think the stronger each link of the chain becomes because of how connected we are, the, the better the product is, you know? So, yeah. Well, for me personally, I think these days, our music in general need the forefathers, as Vetara say, you know? People like myself to really point a lot of these youngsters in the right direction. And, um, so this team, I think, will do the right thing, you know? Because I'm here, I've been here working alongside Taurus. Now we have Mr. Brown, who bring another level to this whole dream of music, you know? And, and, and how we operate, you know? And, and the, the whole movement, has become so much more professional and, and is just moving up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the right way for the team to make the right move towards the dream, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Yes, Dean. I just, I just want to say, uh, while listening to, to you and Taros a while ago, I'd like to point out to the audience that as, as the forefather issue who came out, it's, it's great to know that both Taros, Alain, and Shane Brown are second generation in the music. Because Alain's mother was a big star in the 60s. Uh, Jimmy Riley is a big star in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even the 90s and 2000s before he passed on to greater heights. And of course, Shane Brown is the son of one of the greatest engineers that came out of Jamaica, which is Errol Brown, who has worked with Bob Marley, who has worked with the Scatterlites, who has worked with so many of the greats, still working very hard. And it, it's so great to see the tradition continuing, you know. And then I'd like to ask a question, because Dean has been very instrumental in, in, in Taros' career. In fact, uh, Taros didn't say it, but Dean was the man who really had him focus on singing because he was a DJ for a little while and wanted to DJ more than singing. And Dean said, listen, you're a singer. He, he wasn't as convinced as Dean, but the rest is history. Yeah. Now, the, I consider the album Parable, one of your greatest albums of all time. Thank you. And I'd like you, to, you and Dean to explain what it was like in the studios making that particular song. Because sometimes when I listen to songs like Lion Paw and all of these great, great songs, I'm wondering what the hell was going on in the <laughs> studio that caused uh, Taros to be writing and Dean to be producing and co-writing these awesome songs. Well, all right, Parables is my second album. My first album was called Challenges. The reason why I call it Challenges is because, as you say, you have man like Dean Fraser, Gibby Morrison. I tell him, youth, you're wasting your voice, man. Sing. I must say, sing in there. And he must say, sing. I must say, all right. But my artists are write songs, all these writing songs. So here comes Parables. After we do Challenges, about three, four years after that, Dean said, ready again, you know, next album. To tell you the honest truth here in the university, at that time, I never really enthusiastic about making any more singing songs. I said, Dean, listen, me just go and write some song. Live a country, live a Rasta life, and just go on. Greater Mike Coconut, and just go live life. Be a songwriter and Rasta fire, I'm good. Singing thing here. He said, what am to your Taurus? Ready. So Dean tricked me. 
Dean is working with the great Luciano and them do a song. Give praise to Rastafari. And Dean say, yo, I have the rhythm, you know, my rhythm, you know. Give me a tune on the rhythm. And I say, wah. All right. So I have a tune. Dean leave and go on tour. When he go on tour, he a song. And for some reason in his mind, he feel like, say, I could sing this song, a song called Stay With You from John Legend. So Dean called me and said, Dean, Dean said, Taurus, you know John Legend? I said, yeah, man, Dean, you're talking about, yeah. He said, more I sing him song. I said, me, sing people song. You're mad, Dean, man. I'm not singing anybody's song, man. Dean said, boss, sing the song, no? I soon come from to her. So I said, all right. I go and trick Dean. So I come to the studio the day. We met the rhythm, the man, everything. I write my song. So Dean said, go. So I sing the song when me write. Wicked, quick, quick, quick. And I said, all right, Dean, bye. Later. He said, walk to the next song, boss. And I said, all right. And I sing the next song. And we just call it an experiment then. From that, we just do that. And next week, he said, two more. And I just write some song on my piano. And my guitar and my card come. He said, all right, one more. Till we have an album. Natural, just like that. It wasn't to say we're going to make this big. We just trial and error. Sometimes we don't write no song. We just play a rhythm. And then listen to the rhythm and say, yo, beware. Yeah, man, it's a vibe like this. And we just write it in the studio. It was just experiment. And it worked out to be one of a real great reggae album. Parables. So the reason why it named Parables also is because there's a lot of hidden messages in the songs. For example, she is royal. When we say, I and I, I know the king and queen crown, same time. I'm making reference to the coronation with his majesty and empress, man, then the second of November, 1930. But if I tell you that, it's not like I'm preaching to you. But if I sing it to you, you're just dancing, you don't even know you get the message the same way. So that's parables. Parables full of some like a different message. You have to just listen to the song. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, most of what Taurus just said, is, is, that's basically it. But um, from my si side, really, I, I heard a voice that was totally different. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a voice crying, you know, a voice with a lot of soul. And um, him no know me a listen, you know. <laughs> you, you, you understand me? Because he's doing his little piano thing, you know. And I mean, he does that because he's at my home. Yeah. And I have a piano there. And he does that. And it, it, I don't know if it's weird him or wait for me at night time for when I come home or him just I do it. But when we reach home, him always I play. If it's even four o'clock in the morning, he might play something. So I, he, he always on the piano, either inside my room or in the living room. And even when I come in, before I even fall asleep, I would listen to him. And, you know, I would say, this voice is just different, you know. So when, when I went to him and said, come ready for parables we don't have no money we, we really don't know where we are going you know? we just know where we are going you know so i would just come to the answer come this song one more song two more songs you know and and we would just stay and create and then i would go home and i would think of which drum and bass to use today so I would use Sly and Robbie for She's Royal. I would use um, Kirk and Michael Fletcher for Stay With You. You know, I would just juggle them. I would call Chris, you know, um, Chris from yeah. um, Steve Marley. Yeah. Yes, I would call Chris and Chris Meredith and Mark Darson from Shaggy. And I would say, come. Pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. You understand what I'm saying? And I would call Danny Basie. You understand me? And, and, and I would just put these little groups together and everything would just come out like really fresh and, 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 and really enticing. And you know, with the, 
I mean, it, it was like me and thing, you know. It's real the help of, it's a total help of the musicians, you know. All these great musicians, you know. Um, people like uh, Bowie McLaughlin, you know. Laman Savory, mm -hmm. you know. All these great musicians, you know. And of course, our engineer, Rommel, you know. I mean, I had these early morning kicks, you know. Seven o'clock, Rommel, you know someone who got the studio. Ready. You know, and, and um, I was also lucky to, to, to have had Mikey Bennett to say, Dean, come to the studio anytime you want. You know, so, you know, Parables was a total thing, yeah. you know, f with, with, with all these musicians and myself, you know, and Taurus, of course, you know. And, we, you know, in the meantime, we still have a big up you know, two of the greatest harmony singers who left us, Altia Lane and yeah. Connie Campbell, yes. they were very instrumental in, you know, coming to the studio and making this thing happen. Yeah. True, true. Yes. Wow. Okay, we're going to listen to a tune. Remember, we are at the time of the Olympics and we want to play one song. <clears throat> It, we just a run it. So we just have a singer. Charlie Cream. How we them afraid of Jamaica? Huh. Them said the sun to us. This side of the equator. Charlie Brown. Huh. And I said the whole world no stop watch Jamaica. Hey. Them said them love how we dress. Love how we talk. Them love the flavor. Hey. Whether food, fashion or music. How we run it. How we run it. Hey. Whether sports or academics. How we run it. How we run it, yes we rich in a culture Pull up a history, we run it, how we run it And if a trial and tribulation, we must overcome it How we run it, oh, no we no, no we no better than yard ha. I'm not afraid for torture, no we no, no we no better than yard ha. I'm not ashamed for torture, so I've been many places and seen many faces I'm not afraid for torture, so me know you're listening yeah. <laughs> Yes, Jamaica definitely runs it, as we see not only at the Olympics, but also when you see a festival like this, which is dedicated to reggae music. Yes. And I would love to put one question to all the panelists, which is more type of a general question. But what makes Jamaica such an extraordinary place that it creates this abundance of talents? Wow. You started. Wow. Um, I don't know. I just think that we are very blessed. I think that there is a spirit of, of, of oneness and love and there is a rhythm that we all live to and that rhythm has, has birthed itself and called itself reggae music and it has reached out to the entire world. And I think that the messages of reggae music are powerful and positive and that, especially in the type of world we live in now, we need this positive reinforcement. We need to be told over and over that we are one, that we should live in love, that we should we should, you know, um, interact with each other in ways that would, would grow respect and, and grow togetherness and unity and oneness. And I think that message is timeless. And the beat, the bass, I think it, it, it goes into your heart and it infects your soul. And no matter whether or not you, you, you realize it, you're in love, you know, with our country, with our culture. So that's why I think um, we are so blessed, you know, and give thanks. God is amazing. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, it's a couple of things. I'll, I'll take it from a, a different perspective. I think that uh, Jamaicans coming from Africa, they said that a lot of the, the most rebellious and uh, slaves who resisted the, 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 the travel, they, they sent them to Jamaica. Yeah. They also say that, that it was one of the last stops on, on the... On the the, 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 transatlantic. the transatlantic route. Yeah. And so if you survived to stop in Jamaica, you really had some strength and, and resistance. And so this continued in the plantation and we use music as a, a tool to, 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 to alleviate and also to attack and also to sustain ourselves. Now, 
come to the 1950s, this tradition is going on same, same, same way. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to look at three things that, can, that cause us to be so talented, especially in the music. Repetition. Repetition is an African trait. The drums, repeating, repeating. And our music uh, use repetition in a lot of ways. We repeat our rhythms. Rhythms last for 40 years. That's unheard of in any other genre. Uh, lyrics last the same way. Bob Marley repeated a lot of his lyrics. He repeated some of the lyrics that he wrote 10, 15 years. When he signed to Island, Island he repeated th those songs. You know, songs like 400 years, uh, just to name a few. Sun is shining, please don't you rock my boat. All of those songs he did. The next thing is the, the, the strength of our community. Yeah. We share everything. Every aspect of Jamaican life is about sharing. So we use lyrics. Dean could go to Coxon's vault and just lick the rhythm. And only recently that he would have to pay copyright or acknowledge copyright. So there was this notion of sharing. We saw the music as our property, a community property. And that is what sustained the kind of uh, creativity passing on from one to the next. And then now, Jamaicans are the most traveled, one of the most traveled set of people in the world. And this is from way back when. And because of that, we pick up a lot of things from every other culture. And the music, we picked up a lot of the, the stuff from R&B, blues, Afro-Caribbean beat, Haitian beat, we even right. borrowed from, right. from, from, from Trinidad yeah. and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And because of this kind of dynamic interaction, I think that explains some of how we continue to be creative because we see music as life. We, there's no distinction between music, dance, culture, how you interact. Everything is one for us. And because of that, it, 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 it manifests itself in this hyper-creativity. Uh, Jason Toynbee, I adopted that word from him. This hyper-creativity. And it's all in the way we do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things from a different aspect, again, what I really want to point out, my opinion, a lot of the reason why the artists, them, and athletes, them, and the people, them, who are striving for better in Jamaica so great is because of the circumstances and the situations where they live in. You know, when we look at, like, my mother, you know, who's a doctor now, she's a humble woman from the country. We say have milk cow and them something, you know what I mean? So... My father's a youth from the ghetto. You understand me? Even parables, when they talk about parables, where you love so much. I never have no current them time there. I never have no electricity. I never catch water by my head. I wash my clothes at the riverside. You know what I mean? Dean Fraser from Trenchtown. You know what I mean? You see both from the country. So, I mean, the humble beginnings and, you know, the big dreams and them thing there. I just said the community also, you know? When you really look and know, say, most youth in Jamaica want to be the breadwinner for him family. Even if him don't do it, him still want to do that and say, yo, I want to make my mother all right, or I have to take care of my brother, or, you know? Him, from a little youth, him have that kind of mind for him. So them thing there, cause we call it hyper-creativity, yeah. Yeah, and them thing there, as them say, pressure. You get diamonds from pressure, you know what I mean? So definitely, a lot of them great things they see happening, it come from struggle. You know, hard, struggling, suffering, resisting. resisting, you know, certain kind of pressure and know that we have to make it. So you have to be the best. You don't have a choice but to be the best. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah well, from my perspective still, <coughs> me is a youth straight out of trench town, you know. And fortunate for me is I was able to go down to Second Street. I mean, I had to sneak out, you know. <laughs> Couldn't make my parents know that I was doing this. And I used to listen to Joe Higgs, P. 
Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, and um, other whalers. You know, Bratway, all them. Everybody was just singing. Whalers was like everyone here. And that, that didn't have anything to do with me and music. This is just a little boy in Trenchtown searching, you know? And when I started to do music now, you know, I was just there and my aunt says, you need to find something to do in the evenings. So I went and I started to learn to play the clarinet, you know, and, but I wanted to play cricket too, you know, because it was a, a, a big thing to be a cricketer. And um, then I got a fine beaten that I need to do something with myself, you know, and so, I just looked at the music and within months I had surpassed everyone who I went to music school and saw learning to play. So then I realized that a lot of these youths in Trenchtown, they listened every day to Alton Ellis up at Fifth Street mm -hmm. and they listened to Ken Booth, they listened to everybody. and. Everybody aspired to be somebody, you understand me? And the minute that we got the chance to make a step forward, then we really did it boldly and very excellent, you understand what I'm saying? And of course, you know, one of the things you must remember about Jamaica, we are a godlike people, you understand me? And we always think and put God first. It's so Jamaican people steer you know, overall, you understand me? So when we start to move forward, we just say, yes, God, we are moving forward. And we just move forward. So we are always excellent at what we do, you know? <laughs> and here is Shane Brown wa just walked in too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and Glenn Brownie. Glenn Brownie. Yes. Musician extraordinaire, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, you know, welcome them. Officially, Shane Brown from Jukebox Production and Glenn Brownie, one of the best bassists, you know, yeah. in the Brown universe. Of the yes. Black yes. Yes. Band. <laughs> and uh, since Dean and Towers, we heard from your beginnings of your career, I would like to involve Elaine again. So what made you drop your nine to five and uh -huh. go into music? Maybe uh -huh. you tell us a bit about this, about your, the beginning yes, of your yes. career. The dream, the dream. Um, I grew up in Jamaica singing as a, as a little girl, acting, um, being a spokesperson on television for a mortgage company when I was nine years old. I didn't know what a mortgage was, but I was the spokesperson. Um, and I was always encouraged by my parents who came from humble beginnings. Again, my father grew up downtown with his mother in a, in a single parent home, you know, very humble beginnings, as well as my mom. My mom was one of 13 kids, and they were by no means rich. But what they had was a richness of, of love in their family and togetherness and support. And um, my mommy's cousin, my cousin, Dennis Brown, these are people that, you know, are family and, and people that, that I saw and I, I, I aspired to be like. So I grew up wanting to sing. Um, but I went to college and got my degree in management and psychology. Um, and in the middle of that, I was learning piano and I was singing and all of that. But you know, in, a, in 2004, when I was working at a bank in New York, uh, JP Morgan, um, I was just so unhappy. And I don't know if anybody else here has that experience where sun, you're fine Friday, Friday is the best day of the week, Saturday is up there too because it's close to Friday, and then Sunday is great until the sun starts to set because you know that the next day is Monday and you have to go to work and you don't like that job that you're doing and then it takes so long to get to Friday. And I was getting, I was there, and I, every, every Sunday I had the Sunday night blues. And I thought, yeah man, I can't live like this. I have to find, I have to sing. What makes me happy, you know, what is my dream? And my dream was always to sing, to write, to create, to produce. And um, you know, while I was working in the bank, I was moonlighting in the nights. 
So I would, I would work from eight to four at the bank and then I'd go home, take a shower and I'd try to get into any studio that would have me in New York because I wanted to write. In 2004, I got promoted to the assistant vice president team. I couldn't, I couldn't moonlight anymore. I'd have, I'd have to start uh, traveling and representing the bank. So I just quit my job. You know, I just threw caution to the wind, um, forgot about the retirement plan, the picket fence, all of that stuff and said, I'm moving home to Jamaica. And I give thanks that, you know, you mentioned teamwork. I give thanks for the people that I have met on this musical journey that have taken me now to this place where I can be sitting on a panel with brilliant musicians like Taurus Riley and Dean Fraser, you know, in the company of, of greatness like Shane Brown and Glenn Brownie. You know, it's just a big blessing. And so what has, what has brought me here is following the dream, you know? Yeah. Yes, thank you all so much. I really wish we would have more time, but I, of course, want also the audience to be involved and to have the chance to ask questions, because as you all know, they're going on stage at a quarter to nine, and I think it's really great that they made it and didn't say, no, we don't have any time, we'll just do it. <laughs> Do my other panelists have a question before we open it up, or should we open it up? We, yeah, of course, we give you all the chance to ask questions, to be it Dean Fraser, Taras Riley, Elaine Norton, and also Dennis Howard. So don't be shy. So who would like to put the first question to our esteemed guests? Yes, who in the house is uh, going to put uh, the first? Okay, we've got uh, one over there. So I would, have to, I would like to have the first question. Um, it might sound strange, but it's from a personal interest. And I would like to know from you, Taurus, even from Dean and from Elaine, what kind of animal would you be if you would be an animal? Animal? <laughs> Just feel to your inner core, and it's 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 a very personal thing. You don't have to. And well, for me it. personally, I can't. Why? <laughs> very nice. Nine lives. Nine lives. Yes. <laughs> I'd be an elephant, a vegetarian, a strong big elephant. <laughs> strong man, yeah. <laughs> I'd be a canary because I love the color yellow and I've always wanted to be able to fly. So I think that would work well with me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for a very non-standard question. And uh, who would like to put the next question to our special guest? Yeah, we got one at the back. The man in the hat. I am a man and I do wear a hat. Um, thank you. Just to a couple of things, I'll be very brief. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it's beautiful to be in the presence of Taurus, Dean. Um, my family grew up on what you do, Dean, so I've got enough, enough respect for you. And I say that from four elder brothers, three elder sisters, mum, dad, everything. So big up yourself. Very serious question, though. It's about musicianship in Jamaica, and I'm sure you've been asked this many times. As artists, as musicians, make the transition as part of, as part of our existence. How, how strong is the next generation of musicians coming through in Jamaica currently and in the future? Because this is so important. You've spoken so eloquently about the influence from Ken Bruce, Lion Robbie, Studio One, all the musicians all the way down to Lion Robbie, down to today, and the producers we have here. So it's essential that that is retained. So please, please tell me that everything's going to be okay, please. <laughs> well, definitely you can sing the Bob Marley song on that, right? Um, we have an institution in Jamaica it's called the Edna Manley School of um, Arts, right? And 
I think that these days we have some of the most talents, mm -hmm. I mean, musical talents. We have very, very good musicians. Mm -hmm. It's not like the days like me when I have to be hustling, trying to, you know, help my little brothers and trying to play at night. And uh, these kids are, are really doing it. And so I have no regrets or I have no remorse, I am not afraid. The music is alive and well yes. in Jamaica. Uh, just, just, just to, I know it just slipped in, but there's also another institution that is he, that was very important in the development of the music, and that's called the Alpha. It's now called the Alpha Institute, and they too continue to, you know, produce talented and great musicians under the 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 the, 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 the guidance of Sparrow Martin. Hi, uh, I'm, a, I'm a primary school teacher in French Guyana, so sorry for my English, I'm French, so uh, I would like to, to say that the, your kind of model for young generation with your, you know, with your love, uh, with the love you want to, to give all around, but uh, not every song not every artist in Jamaica or everyone or, or practice this love, you know? So what do you think about that? Like, like dancehall violence, you know? Like the apologize of violence sometimes. What do you say about that, please? That? Yeah, I can talk about that. Well, I mean, you know, I will tell you that the music that a lot of the artists that you hear that you're calling violent, it's not necessarily violent, you know. Because if you look at it on an entertainment level and you say, you have action movies, you have love movies, so you have Chuck Norris, you have Bruce Lee, you have Rambo, you know? You have Eddie Murphy, you have Will Smith, you have Denzel Washington for the girls. So it's just different kind of moods. Yeah, you can't clap Denzel, I don't know, I clap him. Yeah, for real, so like, I don't really, really, really want anyone here to leave and feel like, say, you hear a song and it sounds that way and the artist is really going to come and look for you and hurt you and kill you. No, man, it's just different flavors. Sometimes you have pepper, sometimes you have honey, sometimes you have sweet and sour. You know what I mean? It's just, and you can go all and all and all and all of these different flavors. So the music, the music is about love. Trust me, because the artist who's giving you these action kind of vibes, them love what they're doing. Them love it. it, 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 it them love it. Them get excited for be creative to tell you about how them jump through the window and behave like them a superman and all that. But you know what I mean? It's just, it's just expression. artistic expression. It's not to be taken literally. Because I, I don't know any artist really hurting anybody or doing anybody anything. So you know you have different movies, love movies, you have Rambo, you have Denzel. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I'd like to add to that, you know, that, um, okay, let's give you the benefit of the doubt that there is maybe one or two artists that maybe say something that is, you know, oppressive or anything like that. Look, boss, after Bob Marley said one love, and after our, our music was sung when the walls are beat down at Berlin and them place there, our music has nothing nothing at all to do with hate and killing people our music is a music of love all the time yeah, yeah. and check it <laughs> i'm gonna cut you in bob marley the greatest artist in the world in my opinion bob marley said one love and guess what else bob marley said i shot the sheriff <laughs> bob marley not shooting anybody it's just creativity it's just a great songwriter giving you an action style, and sometimes you get a love style. Sometimes you get a rude style, and it's all music. Yeah, man.
Do we have more questions? Yeah. Greetings all. I've lost my voice a little bit because of all the entertainment down here, but just excuse me on that. Um, it was just something I came away from the last talk that was here about the music when some of us, you know, um, I'm glad for the positive music that's coming through now for our young people. Um, I'm not really one that's into raga and the slackness, but I come away from my talk the other day and I was thinking, because I don't like raga really, but I was thinking, you know what, some of the slack records that we say we don't like from now, I was thinking back the other day, big people used to sing them things in the 60s, you know, but they were wet dream and all of them course, things there. Of right. course, of you know course. I mean? so <laughs> You know, Bagwire, so wet just, dream, yeah, all those songs. Yeah, it was you just know? in a soft but manner that The only thing is that we used to have a, I well, I used to have a teeth when I'm going to the bar, go punch it in our jukebox, you know? Yeah. But it, it wasn't really something that you heard no. like yeah. every day on the streets, yeah. you know? But I mean with with technology these days, Not you know, right. you can't hide anything, yeah, no, you know. Anything. So <laughs> yes. it's just as you say, is it or oh, you interpret it and take it down. Yes, so. agreed. Totally. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Give thanks. Thanks. Yeah man. You talked earlier about composing and arranging music and I would like to know if you do that according to the musical theory, to the harmonic theory, like you do it in jazz music for example, ah. or if you just follow your inspiration and your heart. Well, again, our music is roots music, you know, and um, if we need to make an arrangement, then we do so. But a lot of times it's coming straight from the heart. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that, you know. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Question in the front row. Yeah. See that? Yeah, it's, it's coming. I have a question for Tyrus Riley. Um, Start Anew is a very um, empowering song for me and I was wondering yeah. where you found the inspiration for that song. I found the inspiration from that, for that song by seeing it. Inspiration, in, spirit, action, action. So seeing this over and over, it gets in my spirit and I feel like I want to sing about it. You know what I mean? So I never get the chance to sing about it until Shane Brown have him read him. And him decides, say, nah, release him rhythm unless me sing by him rhythm. So I say, all right, here's an opportunity to sing about this topic. Domestic violence. And you know, I don't think there's anything domestic about violence, but them join the two words together. No one is perfect, man or woman will fight, but a song like this will kind of just keep people aware of it. You know what I mean? And that's it. Simple. What this is for you, Elaine. Um, back in 2008, 2009, a lot of love songs, Love yes. Loud and Clear. Love Loud, yeah. I like all those tunes. I just wanted to know where they come from and if you've been, like, just about your background, really, if you've been hurt in the past, and if, <laughs> well, how you love so much, and I, I feel <laughs> your music, and okay. just want to know about you. Yes. Well, I write about my experiences, or the experiences of my friends, um, or things I see on TV, or a billboard that I might drive past, or something I overhear in a conversation that somebody that I don't know is having. Um, I sing about love because it's, I think that's the feeling we'll never get tired of. Um, it's the most powerful energy on earth. It's the energy that I want to most hug up, you know, and love up, because it's that feel-good energy. Um, yeah, so I'm inspired a lot to write songs of love, but not just love between a man and a woman. I write about songs of love f 
between me and my creator, love for humankind, um, love for life, you know, and I think that, that that basically covers it all, you know, that does a 360 of our whole experience here. And I give thanks that people have listened to that and that you even care to ask me, but thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, we can take two more last questions, so take your chance and ask your questions. Golden opportunity. Guano? Yes. One, 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 one in the front, uh, front row here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one else? Here. Microphone. We have a mic here. Here. Hello, Mercy. Thank you. Same to you too. Give thanks. <laughs> yes. Um, my number one artist of all time growing up is Laxley Castell. My question is to each one of you, the panel, who is your favorite artist of all time? Wow. <laughs> you oh are so bad. sets of people you know where people start to fight against people and all of that but then nothing lasts forever my dear you know so someday the change will come True. <laughs> True. right because i i personally have seen people really help people while i was living in trenchtown as a youth you know I remember one set of people used to walk me to 7th Street while one set used to wait on me until I crossed 7th Street, which was the border between Jungle and Rima. You understand me? And, and none of them wanted to see arm um, come to me. So personally, my experience in Trenchtown is an experience of love also. So, you know, one of these days, the change will come, you know? And just to say, uh, through various interventions, private, public, and otherwise, there's a significant amount of change happening in Trenchtown right now. Mm -hmm. When JTB just recently licensed Culture Yard as a tourist attraction, mm -hmm. 
uh, five years ago or ten years ago that would have been unheard of. And so, when I go to Trench Down, I feel love, vibes, and peace. I don't think about any, any war. And in fact, uh, I Nation can tell you, right now, he had a thing in Tivoli Gardens, a, 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 dub, a dub party. And right. because of the violence in Tivoli Gardens, he moved it to Trench Down, right. where there is relative calm and peace. You know? Believe, I say relative. <laughs> and so, maybe... Him moving that, 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 that social or entertainment uh, activity from, from Tivoli to Trenchtown. It can inspire people in Tivoli to kind, kind of calm down because the power of the music is so great that it always makes a difference in terms of the violence and in terms of the, the and ameliorate some of the suffering yeah, that happens in these communities. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, because I know time is running out. Stage time is soon. And yeah, the session Dennis was talking about, since I am just seeing a nation over there, it's called Inner City Dub, so that you all know when you go to Jamaica to check it out. And don't be afraid. I found the most love in this inner city or ghetto communities. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dean Fraser. Charles Riley and yeah, Alan Brown.